chemical variant or the super variable, uh, verbal one scores also correlate positively on those scores. In fact, they all correlate positively. We can see that verbal two and three in particular correlate most strongly, and spatial one also has a much stronger correlation than than um, spatial than the other spatial subtests. All right. Okay, so now we have an understanding of what this canonical variant um, is. It's Yes, it's a combined intelligence-dependent variable, but with unequal weightings from verbal 2 and 3 and spatial 1. Now, wouldn't it be useful to actually calculate super variable means so that I can actually look at what the undergrad scored on this super super variable, this uh, canonical variant. And you can do that. It's actually quite easy. What you need, it's the same uh, principle as linear regression. Once you know your unstandardized beta weights, to calculate the super variable for each person in the data sample, in your sample of data, you simply have to multiply each person's verbal one score by this uh, discriminant function coefficient. And this only works for the raw. You have to get the raw discriminant function coefficients, not the standardized. So if I multiply each person's score by negative 0 0.02615, and then add that score to the multiplication of everyone's score on verbal 2 by negative 0.1248, and keep doing that for each section, for each dependent variable, and then sum across all dependent variables, I will get the, uh, the super variable. I will actually get the observed super variable that the MANOVA is actually testing its uh, uh, F value against. So I've actually created that syntax already. And I'll show you what it looks like. I've done it twice because I want to show you that the fact that it's negative values is inconsequential. So here I've got compute, I got a compute statement, and I've called it super variable. Alright, and so here's the raw unstandardized discriminant function coefficient for verbal test one. And I'm multiplying that by verbal one scores, which is in my sample. This is my verbal one scores. So everyone's score is being multiplied by the unstandardized regression weight, which I got from here, the raw discriminant function coefficient. And I've done that for each one of them. So I'm going to add that to the next combination, verbal test 2 multiplied by its corresponding raw, raw unstandardized coefficient, negative 0.12482. All right, so I do that for all the subtests. And the last one here, it's spatial, it's a very small one. So spatial 3 multiplied by negative point zero one nine eight four, which is, I got it from here. All right, so and I'm going to sum that across all people. And it's going to create the actual super variable that MANOVA is based upon in terms of calculating um, the effects. It's actually ultimately what it's doing. So let's run the, that selection of the uh, compute statement. And so I've called this a super variable. And we can see that everyone's got one, and that the undergrads, which are labeled ones, I've got them sorted here. So all the undergrads are in the first section of the data set. And then I've got master students all in order. And then I've got PhD students as well. They're in the last section. And we can see that at the very end, I've got it sorted based on, um, roughly based on, on intelligence size. And we can see that the PhD students have a much uh, greater negative value uh, than the undergrads. Because the PhD students are in the 8, oops, they're in the 8 to 7, 6 ballpark, but the undergrads are in the low threes to twos, threes and twos and fours. Now, these negative scores make it look like that the PhD students are less intelligent, but they're not. They're more intelligent. We knew that by the means when we looked at the individual means. And the reason we're getting thrown is that the that SPSS arbitrarily determined that these would be the negative values and 
this one memory variable that really isn't adding much to the equation is uh, the only positive one. So what I've done